Right, so this video is going to look at fractional distillation. Um, the starting point really here is, is to begin with crude oil. Now crude oil, just like these little barrels here, someone's left some running out there, can be a mess to clean up. Crude oil is a substance which is formed over millions of years. It's essentially made from dead plants and animals that died, fell to the bottom of oceans, seas and things. Over the time, uh, pressure, heat and all the rest of it, those things are converted into the substance, crude oil, which we use today as a precursor or as a, a starting point for a lots of different fuels and things. The problem is, crude oil in its natural format is not right useful. So it's not particularly useful. Um, so yeah, not great. But what's important and what's very, very good about crude oil is it is in fact a mixture uh, and it is a mixture of different lengths or different length length is that a word of different length uh, probably hydrocarbons so this does involve you need to know a little bit about hydrocarbons um, but crude oil is made of lots of different hydrocarbons of lengths going from really short right through to super 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 long and because it's a mixture it can be separated and the method of separation for crude oil so separating into more useful things which can be used as I mentioned things like fuels for example so separated this method of separation is called fractional distillation so distillation usual process of sort of vaporizing and condensing same principle here is being used but on a much larger industrial scale um, with obviously much more grand equipment now fractional distillation the column the fractionating column that's used um, and you'll see various pictures in textbook, revision guides and all the rest, but they all have sort of a, a very similar appearance and they look a little bit like this. So here we have a lovely image showing us a beautiful fractionating column and there's some information down the side which I'll, I'll come on to at the end. But the key process here is not, first of all, for you to memorise what is produced at each level here or what is called each fraction which is the useful bit that comes from the crude oil when the separation takes place you don't need to learn these various things and awareness is use is useful things like fuels for example that's good to know um, you need to know about how these properties um, are related to the to the top or to the bottom of, of the column but what's important is the process that occurs right from the start through to the end as in the separation and the pumping away of these various fractions and that's really really key so the process is relatively straightforward and a question on fractional distillation is an incredibly easy way to get marked because you always just have to basically regurgitate the same answer now understanding it helps you because it's easier therefore to go through and actually answer in an exam but it is always essentially a template so first of all what we find is our crude oil is heated and it's heated over here and it's turned into a vapor and that vapor is essentially what is going to enter the fractionating column so it enters at the bottom now the bottom of the fractionating column you can just call it a column if you want or the tower is very hot 350 400 450 degrees you see various different numbers on different websites and in books and things but it's very hot at the bottom but and a nice color thing here what we find is we've got a temperature gradient so although it's hot at the bottom it's relatively cool at the top and they're saying here about 25 degrees now the key aspect as I already mentioned the oil is a mixture now it's a mixture of different hydrocarbons and these hydrocarbons have different lengths and so each hydrocarbon of a different length has a different boiling point and we are going to utilize that in the separation method so heat the crude oil up nice and hot in it comes pretty much all as a vapor some will run off at this point bitumen sort of thick gloopy tire like substances with very very long boiling uh, very high boiling points very long molecules the rest of it the crude oil is a single gaseous substance so there it is I don't know why I drew it like that it looks ridiculous but it's a single gaseous substance which is existing in here and what's going to happen is it's going to rise and as it rises it is going to cool 
Now the important part is when the temperature and each of these different layers here, levels perhaps, is at a different temperature and in reality these would be built at very specific points to tie into these various parts that are going to be pumped away. But when the whole crude oil rises, when the hydrocarbons in it hit a temperature which is equal to their boiling point, they condense. So when the temperature drops to that of their boiling point, they condense, turn to a liquid and they are pumped off, in this case, the fuel oil comes off, heating oil, diesel, etc, etc. So, the crude oil vaporised, it rises up the tower and it cools as it does so. And as it reaches various levels, as the temperature decreases, when it hits the boiling point of uh, the various hydrocarbons that make it, they condense. And the rest of the crude oil, it just continues moving up the tower and bits basically condense off it and are pumped away. Until at the top, we end up with just some gases which are pumped off and they produce bottled gas. Now the key separation part comes from each of these hydrocarbons that makes up the mixture that is crude oil has a different boiling point and so it, they condense at different levels in the tower. If they all condense at the same level all you'd do is move heated vaporised uh, crude oil, you'd move it from here to one place which would be completely pointless and it'd cost you a load of money. So what they actually do is they find that because it has these different hydrocarbons, just to really stress this point, different boiling points, they condense at different layers, different levels in the tower and that leads to separation and takes this big fairly useless crude oil mess and separates it into all these useful bits called fractions. Now these as I said are useful often primarily for fuels, petrol, diesel, etc. One thing to draw your attention to though is the application of the hydrocarbon properties to this. Down the bottom where we have very, very hot, that's where our higher boiling point substances condense. And as we move up and it gets cooler, we have our lower boiling point substances that condense or rather don't condense and come off as gases. So this is where our smaller molecules are. These are where they are much more easy to burn. They're more flammable. They are much less viscous. The bottom, our higher boiling points, bigger molecules, they're more viscous, they're much less flammable. And that is essentially the process of fractious distillation. Heat it up, vapour goes in, vapour rises, it cools, the various hydrocarbons condense at different levels in the tower because they have different boiling points, separation occurs, we make loads of money, everyone's really rich, and we go on holiday forever. Hopefully that's been some help. There you have it.